Okay. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Okay. This is the uh, Public Protection Conference Committee. In case some of you wandered into the wrong room, you can get out now. If not, please be, you're welcome to stay. Um, today we'll, we'll uh, hear from the, the <coughs> Senator Nizzolio first regarding uh, the table target. Thank you, Assemblyman, and uh, good afternoon, my colleagues uh, that uh, appreciate the opportunities again to discuss these matters with you. I'm uh, with uh, Senator Tom Croce, Senator Marty Golden, uh, Senator <coughs> Pat Gallivan, Senator John Bonasek, uh, Senator Ruth Assel Thompson. Uh, that we are involved uh, with, uh, now uh, presented with a table target and that that involvement uh, requires us to review a number of issues uh, that we have to uh, reconcile and uh, hopefully add uh, some funding to uh, under the t uh, target, which is $13 million. Uh, with that, uh, Assemblyman Melental, uh, could you address some of those issues that need to be discussed? Yes, I will, and I neglected to uh, tell you, even though you know most of them, to my left is Assemblywoman uh, Helene Weinstein, and uh, to her left is Assemblyman Luis Sepulveda. Sepulveda, excuse me, I always say it wrong, but. Changing it to Smith. <laughs> and Assemblywoman Crystal Peoples, and uh, Assemblyman Joseph Saladino. So today's uh, issues and the major issues that we'll be dealing with throughout will involve civil legal services, domestic violence, offender registry, Office of Indigent Legal Services, Indigent Defense Services funding in total, Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant Program, Counterterrorism and Cybersecurity, Operation Snug Program, Alternative to Incarceration funding, Executive Proposed Criminal Justice Reform Act, Commission on Judicial Conduct funding, and uh, and Senator Nizzolio. Thank you, uh, Senator <coughs> Yes, those issues along with uh, measures regarding uh, vital restorations to criminal justice funding in a variety of areas, uh, such as those of the needs of law enforcement, uh, establishing support uh, for alternatives to incarceration programs, uh, certainly issues uh, relating to civil and criminal legal services, uh, as well as uh, domestic violence prevention funding are all matters that are continued. We have begun discussions on a number of those subjects uh, that staffs uh, now have uh, the challenge of helping us forge in earnest uh, a final product. Okay, as, as you can tell, a $13 million table target is a very meager one, so it's gonna be uh, a task for us to try and live within that target because we do have so many uh, divergent needs that need to be fulfilled at this table. And uh, I know that there are uh, members of, on both sides who may want to talk about some of the issues that I referred to earlier. So we'd like to hear from them first. Maybe uh, Senator Nizzolio, what, some of your members would like to say something. Uh, certainly, uh, the floor is open to any of the senators uh, wishing to speak. No. Senator Croce. Well, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Chairman Lenthal, as well. Um, I, I know we have a lot of work ahead of us, and I uh, appreciate the indulgence of the Chair and my colleagues. Uh, the recent events in Belgium should be a foundational uh, lens by which we view some of our work here in the, in the subcommittee, in the conference committee. And I, I can tell you that I hope uh, that we don't take a short-sighted route uh, during these conversations and during these discussions. What happened in Belgium, what happened in Brussels, in Paris, and San Bernardino will happen in New York. And the question is, as a government, how do we want to be positioned the day after the attack, but certainly do we want to be positioned to prevent an attack? Uh, there's a lot of work, even at the state level, even the good old New York State Assembly and Senate, there's a lot of work that we can do to prevent an attack. It requires stepping out of our comfort zone sometimes, certainly, but 
there is a lot of work that we can do and some of the legislation and some of the things that we have put into uh, these bills uh, into this budget could do that could prevent an attack uh, and we have to be ready to face uh, all the challenges that present our, I, I don't want to send law enforcement or National Guardsmen out without the intelligence to prevent an attack uh, I don't want them to be a first responder in harm's way without the intelligence and the support to do it uh, there is a great assemblyman uh, the quintessential New Yorker and a fabulous governor, Theodore Roosevelt, who said that uh, Americans don't learn by experience, we learn by catastrophe. I hope we prove him wrong. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Senator Croce, and thank you for your work as chair of the Senate Homeland Security uh, Committee, uh, that the watchwords of this conference committee are public protection, and that's the mission here. Uh, Senator Golden. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Joe Lentil, our uh, chair of the assembly. Uh, I, along with uh, agreeing with Tom Croce that we have to address the concerns that are going on around the world and especially here in this great uh, state and uh, especially in the, uh, um, when we take a look at what goes on in the city of New York, the number of people in and through and out and uh, visiting that city over the course of the year. Uh, 60, 70, 80,000 people in and out of that city. We have to be ever mindful of what's going on, and I know that we have a $4 million ask at the table with the assembly, uh, a reapprobe for the uh, anti-terror kits. Hopefully that money will go forward and that money will go into those anti-terror kits to make sure that we take care of not just our uh, New York City issues, but also the money for the state troopers to make sure that they too are uh, comparable and have the money to be able to go forward and making sure that the city and state, uh, city and state are safe. It's a shame that I'm talking to you in 2016 and I can actually look at you out in the audience and here on this panel and say that, uh, that we have a city that is still uh, radios that, are in, that don't have operability, uh, that the city does not have connections to the MTA and Port Authority and our PDs are not hooked up. Uh, we need operability in our city and in our state uh, in a case of an emergency and we need to make sure that the funding is there to make sure that the operability uh, is in fact uh, uh, corrected in our great state. Uh, there's also an issue on DA's money in Manhattan. Hopefully we can come to some um, agreement and trying to figure out how that money would be distributed going forward. And uh, the last but not least, I know the uh, issue of uh, state troopers going into the city of New York and the issue of our counterterrorism unit on the number of uh, uh, employments, the number of people in that unit, uh, where that unit is going to be assigned, uh, that there is still an appropriate assignment of uh, manpower across the state, and that we have the state troopers and the National Guard actually working together with NYPD, with the police commissioner in the city of New York, so that we can coordinate the uh, services of our state troopers, our National Guard, and our NYPD, and our PDs across this great state to make sure that we have the proper coverage. Uh, so that's uh, important to me, and I believe to most of the colleagues here in my pa in this panel here, and uh, to the, uh, my fellow New Yorkers. Uh, it's only a matter of when. Uh, it's uh, something happens, it's going to, uh, and we have to be prepared. Uh, we have some of the greatest uh, law enforcement in the world here in this great state, and uh, hopefully it, uh, we will be able to forge ahead and make sure there are no incidents here in this great city and state, but we must be prepared for it. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Golden. Uh, yes, any other sir. senators wish to speak? You hearing none? Yes, thank you, uh, Senator Nizzolio. First of all, I, I just want to say how uh, pleased I am to have been able over the past week or so to, to meet with, uh, at least by telephone conference call with Senator Croce and to have numerous discussions with Senator Golden about some of the concerns that they've raised about the homeland security issues. And uh, we're very happy on this side of the table to be able to deal with them. We hope that uh, some of the some of the issues that Senator Golden mentioned sounds like the remarks I gave at our budget committee last year, I the Ways listening. and Means Committee, budget committee, about the need for better communication between the police uh, forces and the fire department that we still don't have since 2001. <laughs> it's ridiculous. When that was a top priority at the time the towers went down was to have better communication 
between those uh, first responders. And uh, um, so all I'm going to say is that uh, I couldn't agree with Senator Golden more also about the fact that uh, the governor said yesterday we need to step up with uh, uh, counterterrorism measures regarding the state police in involvement in New York City because we know that's where the target is going to be if ever it happens again because that's where they want to be. They tell us where they're going. We know where they're going. They're going, first of all, now they're going to where it's most popular to go. And secondly, they're going to where it's easier for them to, to do damage. So I think that, uh, I hope the governor is listening right now that a table target of 13 million isn't going to do it in order to provide the protection we need in New York City. We probably need more money to do that. So with that, I'm going to leave it and ask some of my other members if they have something to say to please uh, say so. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Saladino, who asked me first to speak, if he wanted to talk about an issue. You want to respond, whatever you like. Does anybody Christine. want to respond to what, what's already been said? Or? No, go first if you like. I, I think Assemblywoman Mr. Peoples. Saladino has a new topic. He has a new topic, so Assemblywoman so. Peoples. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> reiterate uh, and, and remind us all that, you know, I, I think that our experience that we had um, in New York City some years ago really did uh, bring us to a, a new level in public protection in this state. Uh, I remember uh, my former uh, colleague who sat in the position that I sit in right now, Rowan Destito, who actually put together uh, I would say uh, public hearings all over the state to figure out how do we have our public protection uh, in closer communication with each other. And I think that we are, are in a better position because of that. Now I will agree with you, Mr. Chairman, that uh, 13 million may not be enough for us to do all the things that we need to do that is of the highest priority in this state. And that is to protect New Yorkers, whether they're babies uh, from their families, whether they're women from their spouses or whether they're citizens from potential terrorists. We have to protect people. And um, I think that uh, that's our highest priority and uh, we may have to ask for an increase in that table target to get to those priorities so that they're funded appropriately. Thank you, Crystal. Uh, Mr. Saladino. Thank you. I'd like to point out that the Assembly Minority Conference is very much in support of the table targets that we're looking at because of the fact that public protection and criminal justice services are so paramount to our state. We realize that we are at a time when Americans, New Yorkers, are in grave danger. We woke up the other morning just to find out that ISIS had attacked again. We know they've attacked, Al-Qaeda and others have attacked our country and our city and the people of our state. So when we hear of the Criminal Justice Reform Act and the unintended consequences that could come from that, it seems as though we would be putting more hurdles in front of law enforcement instead of making sure that law enforcement has all the tools and the backing and the support to protect us. We've spoken of New York City, which clearly is ground zero. They're Police officers, their patrolmen, their detectives, and superior officers must be equipped with the green light to do their job. The outer boroughs, the outer counties, Nassau, Suffolk, Westchester, and across our state from end to end, we must ensure that we are not taking away hurdles, but giving the support needed for our first responders to protect the people of this state. We respect folks of every creed, socioeconomic status, and religion. But make no mistake, we are at a very dangerous time. And we're concerned that the many motivations folks would have to bring the Criminal Justice Reform Act will have those unintended consequences and take away from the safety of New Yorkers. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. It, uh, thank you very much for uh, your comments uh, that we uh, are on a very uh, fast track. We want to see an on-time budget. Uh, the negotiations will 
uh, continue over the next few days, hours, and uh, days, and hopefully uh, we'll get a, a solution and agreements that uh, uh, we can uh, work with and live by. So thank you very much. Uh, and unless there's any further comment, uh, Assemblyman? Yes, I think we uh, want to make a motion. I want to echo the sentiments made by Senator Nazolio and that uh, we will be in consultation with all of the members over the weekend and our staffs so that we can be prepared to have something done by Monday when a budget has to be printed by Monday night. Thank you very much. Move to adjourn. adjourn. Thank you.